Venus and Jupiter come incredibly close to each other, and we take a look at some of the best galaxies and open star clusters that you can go out to observe and image. Let's take a look at the night sky for March of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. With no major meteor showers this month, we start off with our best views of the moon, beginning with a full moon on the night of March 7th. Last quarter on the 14th, new moon on the 21st, and first quarter phase on the 28th. We also have several objects really close to the moon this month, beginning with Jupiter and the moon setting with each other on March 22nd. One night later, Venus and the Moon hang out together on the 23rd, followed by the Moon and Uranus on the 24th. Probably my favorite matchup with the Moon this month, though, is its close approach to the Pleiades on the night of March 25th. You can see all of these events with the naked eye, but if you own a pair of binoculars, you can go outside to get even more detail of the lunar surface and the moon's close approach to these objects this month. For those of you with a telescope, see if you can hunt down some of the famous lunar features, like the Montes Apeneus Mountains, that span 370 miles and have peaks that rise upwards of three miles. I was able to take this picture of these mountains using an iPhone connected to my telescope with a cell phone adapter. If you're able to take any pictures of the moon or any other object in the night sky this month, be sure to share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. After weeks of us seeing Jupiter and Venus slowly approach each other in the night sky right after sunset, they finally have their close approach to each other on the night of March 1st. To see them, go outside and look to the west right after the sunset, and these two bright objects will slowly start to appear in the background sky as it darkens. With the naked eye, they're almost going to appear to touch each other, and you might not even be able to split the difference between the two of them with them only being a half degree apart. The views get even more impressive when you turn a pair of binoculars or a telescope towards them and begin to split these two planets to reveal more and more detail. Through my telescope, I'll be able to see both of these objects in the same field of view and make out the cloud belts of Jupiter and its Galilean moons. If you're able to go out to see this event, please let us know how your experience was in the comments section below. Now with Mercury, Saturn, and Neptune too close to the Sun for any observations this month, we turn our attention to Uranus and Mars for our final two planets for March. Both of these targets are going to be in the West and will be best viewed about an hour after sunset. And remember that Mars is getting farther and farther away from us each night, so the earlier in the month the better for your observations or images. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like it and please consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Even though it's a tough target, I still wanted to do one more update on Comet ZTF. I was able to get some observations and images of it in late January and early February. It is definitely a target that is getting more dim every night, but if you have an 8 inch or larger telescope, you could track it as it travels through the constellation Eridanus to maybe get some views of it coming up over the next few weeks. As we leave our solar system behind and move into deep space for objects that are within our Milky Way galaxy, and even beyond it in some cases, it's important to note that you are going to probably want to use a telescope to get the best views of these objects. Also, make sure you're away from light pollution as best as possible, and that does include the moon being out. I try to pick objects for this portion of the video that can be viewed through a 4-inch telescope, but the larger the telescope and the better the conditions, the better views you'll have. This month we're going to take a look at two different types of objects, the first of which are open clusters. These collections of stars, sometimes dozens to a few hundred, are held together by gravity. Our second type of object is going to be a galaxy. 
two different types of galaxies actually that are right next to each other, one of which is a spiral and the other is irregular in its shape. Let's begin with the open clusters by going outside about an hour and a half after sunset and facing towards the southeast. As you look up, you will come across the constellation Cancer and our first object, the Beehive Cluster. Begin by finding this object with the naked eye, and then work your way up to low-powered and then high-powered magnifications. For my 8-inch telescope, that ranges anywhere from 50 to 200 times magnification on most nights. As you zoom in, more and more stars will become visible. Open clusters are made up of dozens to hundreds of stars that are held together by gravity. This image I took of the Beehive Cluster shows the beauty of this open cluster through long exposure astrophotography. I've got several videos on how to take images like this, and I'll be sure to leave a link to a few of them in the description below. Right down from the Beehive Cluster is our second deep sky object this month, M67, another open cluster. You probably won't be spotting this one with the naked eye like the Beehive, but it's still a beautiful collection of stars with a pair of binoculars and a telescope. Let's reorient ourselves to the horizon, and this time face towards the northeast as we look up to find two of my favorite galaxies this time of year. Look up to find Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. And to the left of the star Duba, you will star hop to M81 and M82. These were two of the first galaxies that I ever viewed through a four and a half inch telescope about 15 years ago. M81 is a gorgeous spiral galaxy, and depending on your telescope and light pollution, you may be able to make out its spiral arms swinging out from its core into space. Right next to it is M82, which is a bit of an odd galaxy to view, and is an irregular galaxy, which often makes it referred to as the Cigar Galaxy. I've got a video covering more incredible deep sky objects in the night sky for this time of year, and you can find a link to that in the description below. Those are just some of the best objects that you can go out to observe and image in the night sky for the month of March. If there are any questions that you have or any experiences that you'd like to share for all of us about what you're able to see in the heavens above, please be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.